It is the clinical experience sharing on adhesive capsulitis provided by Family Care Physiotherapy Clinic. It, this video is mainly for physiotherapy profession. Today I'm going to share my clinical practice about adhesive capsulitis. Yeah, just a frozen shoulder. In my practice here, my patient commonly receive MRI to diagnose their frozen shoulder. They also commonly receive steroid injection. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the reason and the research evidence on this. Disclaimer. Not sure if you are aware that frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis, even up to date now, we still don't have a very strict diagnostic criteria. Even we see the oscopy here is um, a lot of scarring as we learn in the theory. But you know scarring associated with a lot of injury and trauma or injury. So nowadays frozen shoulder we still don't have a very clear medical diagnostic criteria. I assume colleagues may share similar experience that um, frozen shoulder come with some specific clinical presentation. Of course it's the age, we know that frozen shoulder, the um, highest prevalence is age around 40 to 60 years old, more on female. Although it can be a traumatic uh, and idiopathic, but we know that history of injury, trauma or surgery may trigger the frozen shoulder development. Therefore, some patients, they will refer for uh, surgery, for surgery rehabilitation. In the first lesson, if I see their age is around that prevalence and female, I will uh, warn them that there is chance the frozen shoulder may come after that. Okay, so if they have some preparation, they may not worry other things as much. And also area of the symptom, behavior of symptoms, the diffuse lateral shoulder discomfort. I will share one very specific clinical presentation on this. If you suspect it's an early frozen shoulder, you try to find a trigger point uh, around the anterior shoulder near the coracoid process. To be very specific, when you find the core coin poset, one hinge down and one hinge lateral, you'll find this trigger point. And then you compare with the intact side, the intact side doesn't have this one. Okay, this is one of the very specific clinical presentation I share with you according to my clinical experience. Also, as you know that uh, frozen shoulder will restrict a lot of range of motion. Uh, the hand behind back is very signature, but uh, it comes at a later stage. Uh, fraction, abduction, a lot of shoulder condition, they will have decrease in uh, range of motion on these two directions. Be more specific, I usually the first one I check is the external rotation in the neutral position. You can find it, uh, if they are going to the early frozen stage, uh, you can find that this range of motion decrease much faster than the others and more specific. I work in private practice, so my referral patient usually they receive an MRI screening. Then you wonder, first MRI, no matter which country, uh, we don't think it's um, very cheap, okay? It involves some causes. And as we mentioned, there is no strict criteria for frozen shoulder. MRI, is it really gold standard for diagnosis of frozen shoulder? Is it really necessary? Uh, here, I try to give some uh, personal point of view. Of course, I'm not an orthopedic surgeon. If any very, very specific knowledge, you may consult an orthopedic surgeon. MRI is very important in shoulder especially for elderly because some important differential diagnosis you need to really see to MRI for example the tear of the shoulder labrum or rotator cuff tear 
Especially this condition shares some similarity. Therefore, need to find out the accurate diagnosis. Especially medical liability is very important for every single country. Yeah. So that's why it is necessary to do proper differential diagnosis. Beside differential diagnosis, adhesive capsulitis under MRI, there are, in the report usually we can find there is mention about edema and thickening of the corneal hemojoy capsule and the surrounding tissue. The interesting part is that this thickening and edema um, is never in a constant place, not necessary to be posterior capsule. Some patient I see is more in the um, subscapularis, I saw that, and also in the inferior part of the joy capsule. For the treatment, uh, when we read the latest systematic review and meta-analysis, we found that early costal seroid intraarticular injection is very useful for frozen shoulder to relieve the pain and to early resume of the range of motion. I will say from my clinical experience, um, rather resuming range of motion, I will say it, um, it avoids so much decrease in range of motion if the injection uh, were prescribed at, uh, at the BFA beginning. And now the research say that injection plus physiotherapy really can have some additional effect. So compared with the very traditional approach I learned in my undergrad, we just to exercise, exercise and exercise, adding costal CY injection from my clinical experience is really, really useful and effective. Then some of the physiotherapy colleagues may um, compare that, yeah, we, besides traditional physiotherapy, we can also do dry needling, shock wave therapy. I would say uh, I've been practicing needling for more than 10 years. Needling has very amazing effect, but transcendent and short term for assistive capsulitis. Maybe I'm not TCM, I'm not as good at needling as them. Uh, the effect of the CY injection is not the same as the dry needling. It's, um, the CY injection is rather long term. Dry needling is rather uh, transcendent short term. And also I observe some TCM, they do dry needling on full and shoulder, also short terms only. The other thing is that uh, extra corporal shortwave therapy. I would like to highlight this quite different. Shortwave is for late stage when we do on the scarring, particularly on the posterior capsule. And Steve I mentioned it here is more for early stage. So it's not the same thing, not the same treatment. I just repeat as the research say that the um, intraarticular causal steroid injection is more effective in the early stage. If the golden period is missed, then the treatment effectiveness may not be as high. Also, not all the patients can receive the steroid injection. They need to screen for contraindication, such as a chance of infection. Maybe very few of them have some chance of weakening of tendon, then they may not be able to receive the injection. And then also the injection, the, uh, the location need to be very precise. As we mentioned that the MRI usually they have they show the edema but not in a constant site. Sometimes posterior capsule, sometimes inverse spinatus, and then maybe other sites. So that's why it explains that why. First, MRI is quite necessary in adhesive capsulitis for differential diagnosis and to facilitate the injection later. Of course, the causes on MRI and the injection are definitely higher than physiotherapy. But overall, uh, I will say that if initially the patient can receive early injection of the costal device, they are suitable for that to do so. The time frame for physiotherapy is rather shorter. Therefore, overall, two approaches, um, MRI injection plus physiotherapy versus physiotherapy alone, the overall causes from my experience are quite similar. 
but the combined therapy really have a shorter recovery period, so the patients suffer less disability and pain. That's my experience. Here are the references uh, of this presentation. Again, I need to repeat that because for this session, some of the knowledge is about the orthopedics, uh, MRI reading, injection may not be my very profession. If I have some any inaccurate information or content, feel free to point it out. Uh, it will facilitate our learning. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.